your car does this, maybe you could benefit from having your front brake rotors machined or replaced. But if when you brake your car does this, and the steering wheel doesn't move, then it's probably the back brakes. That's what we're doing today. Today I'm uh, working on getting the back rotors straight. Let me show you what warped back rotors look like. So this is what warped rotors look like on a lathe. You can see that this holds the cutting bit in place so that it can't go in and out this way. And you'll also notice that there's a blank spot here and a cut spot on each side of it. That's because that's become a low spot. It's become smeared. Here's what it sounds like. You can see as you look up close, that it's just not a flat surface at all. So what happens is you apply the brakes to that, is they'll shake and they'll move and they'll wiggle back and forth. And as they do that, it's just like when you have uneven tire wear from bad shocks or struts. It exacerbates it, it actually makes it worse. What we're doing is we're machining these rotors. Now a lot of times it's better to just replace a warped brake rotor. Uh, you can see these are solid and they're thick. That being the case, they're a really good candidate for turning. Oftentimes a lot of the cheap rotors that people replace the warped rotors with are even worse than the ones that came off where they to be machined. These are the factory rotors and they're actually pretty decent quality. Alright folks, we have battery go dead bad away. Let me show this again. Right in there on it. Yeah, that's about good, isn't it? I don't mean to make long boring videos, sometimes it just happens. At least I try to be concise in the beginning, huh? You get all your information up front. Obviously this isn't the main part of the shop, this is just a little accessory building off this side. Can't fit everything. This is basically my Indian sweat lodge. It's where I come to get spiritual and sweat. I don't know if it showed all the components in there when I was filming before, so I'm going to do that again looking forward to it. I'm pretty excited. So this side on the back side that you don't see is looking gorgeous. This side not so much. I'm going to take another pass for sure. I knew that. When you look at the setting on the dial, you can see I didn't crank it to zero. It's grinding so hard. I'm like, man, I don't want to kill it. You see, I'm just shy. I'm so shy. There you go. About to get loud. You hit that gust room. Look at that, just coming off. Another thing is kind of just have to knock it down a little bit. There you go. Now it just goes straight down into the cat. Don't really have to do that, but it's just kind of fun. Especially if there's a camera going. Very visually dynamic. Okay, so that's cheese in Spanish for those of you watching at home. Okay, so get into this little deepest spot, see where that's at. Our zero is going to cover that, no problem. Sounds like a health plan, except for that it covers it. Alright, so we go in here, get down in there, you know, just a little past zero, do the same thing on this side. 
set it to fast action. So all the meat, all the heavy stuff's already taken off, so we just want a nice straight cut and we're just going to zip right on through. Some people do it backwards way, you know, they'll cut all the coarse stuff really fast, and then they'll go back through with the smooth. I'm a rebel. The reason why I do it the way that I do it is it's easier on the machine, the machine lasts longer. You don't get all that heavy, hard cutting at a fast pace, it's less hard on it. You know what's cool about these brake blades? Let me tell you, they have a mechanical fuse with a plastic gear. You know, you get all the drive on this side, and you know, it turns all this stuff, and it goes back here to this, and then inside of here, there's a little cap. And you take this cap off, and inside of there, you have a plastic gear. Here's some extra parts for the lathe. See that, ah, sorry, apologize. Is that white plastic gear in there that you just can't see? All right, what's going on? What's going on? Looking gorgeous. That's what's going on. Look at that. Beautiful. So there's this plastic gear that you can't see unless I put it in the light, right? Right? Well, you just can't see that. There you go. So those plastic teeth wear off, and that's in here. And it's just held on by a little circlip. You can see that it's hexagon. Uh, interfacing. So you just pop that off, pop the thing in, put this in. So if something jams up, it doesn't grind and just rip everything to pieces and ruin your, you know, your cutting arm. It just takes out this plastic gear. A mechanical fuse. Pretty clever. Close this up so it doesn't go all over the place if it comes undone. Thank you very much. So. That's what happens if you have a car that shakes when you hit the brakes. And that's something else. You know what else is something else? Ah, this. Just look at that beauty, eh? It is just slightly coarse, but it's really not that bad. It's just very smooth, very flat surface. You drive that 10 minutes and it's just going to quiet right down. It'll sound a little rough when you first drive it like that, but you burn it in and you got to test drive it on the freeway anyway. That'll burn it in and smooth it out. So it's expeditious. It preserves the lathe. Rock and roll, coochie coo. Rock and roll, coochie coo. I love it. I, I think that it's a really well-made quality tool. And say, if you look in my toolbox, a lot of what I have is some decent stuff. I now mean, have the most expensive tools in the world. This is turning into a toolbox review. So, as you look around the shop, you can see that I've got a toolbox next to my toolbox, across from my toolbox, in front of my toolbox. I just kind of spread them out all over the place. Um, rather than having them in one place. A lot of what I have is duplicated, like you've got your sockets and your pliers and your extensions and your spark plug socket and inspection mirrors, uh, magnet tool. Uh, I just bought a bunch because they were hard to find one time. 
But I've just got everything kind of together, paper towels on the right, and then I just do the same thing on this toolbox. You see, it's pretty much the same thing. I got my ratchets up front, extension, spark plugs, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot the same. Um, my top drawer items, things that I use a lot of, is my half inch drive, and a lot of these are Harbor Freight sockets, and I love them. Um, it's a hit and miss on them. You get a good batch, they are amazing, and they last for years. They're as good as anything else out there. You get a bad batch, and they're absolutely terrible. It just depends. So I've bought two or three batches and I have them kicking around and the lifetime warranty if they break I replace them but I've got backups if they do break. I have to be able to have something work when I need it. So you got to have backups if you're going to go that route. Um, say I like Mac tools the best as far as the air tools with the exception of the air chisel. I like the Cornwall one. Um, but you know I've got some decent tools. Uh, I know what's good and what isn't. Uh, going down the next drawer, I've got uh, great neck sockets. I just like these for the blow mold case. And you see some of them are customized. Some of them are not as uh, deep as they used to be. If you're going to be a short, you might as well be a real short, right? I customize, you know, my tools, they're not gold plated. They're not super fancy. Um, I get something that's going to work. It has to work in order for, there's my... Uh, that was the first tool review I did, I think, was the little uh, cross foot line wrenches. I love those things. Uh, snap on. You know, I just got a mix of everything, but it's got to work, and I don't want to spend too much on it because I'm going to cut it, chop it, weld it. I mean, it sounds like a Daft Punk song once you get going, um, but when it comes to tools, they have to work. And sometimes the way that they come from the factory, they're really, really pretty, but they don't work. So, I'll make them work. Let's say this is from O'Reilly's, Craig and Shucks, O'Reilly Identity Crisis Company. Um, this is just stuff that I don't use a whole lot of. Use this to get brake rotors off since here. And then my butterfly gun that I've had forever. I've actually dropped it and broke that, so I put a clamp on it. And This ever, never ever gets used now that I have this guy right here. It pretty much... Uh, what do you call it? Constructive, uh, destructive creation or something like that. Basically, you don't use a typewriter because you got computers. So, not a whole lot going on in there. Um, that drawer doesn't open real well, and it's the add-on drawer. That's why it doesn't match. So we got my high school team mascot on there. Um, going to the side. And I like these carts because if I'm on a creeper, I know there's bigger, better, badder ones that you can use. Um, but the reason why I like this is if I'm on a creeper, I can reach up and not even looking, be able to reach in and grab whatever I need. So it's really functional, it works really well. I get a toolbox that's this tall, it's nice, it holds things well. You know, it's got the little cabinets on the side and everything, little drop drawers. But it's too freaking tall to get to um, if you're on a creeper. I don't have a lift as of yet. I've been on the fence about getting one. You just take up so much space. Uh, but basically this is too tall. It's not as functional. And then uh, if you go to a toolbox behind it, see I've got a little... Another thing about this one that I don't like, it's got the locking, latching drawers or whatever, and the bearings or whatever. This side uh, rolls on a pivot. you got uh, swivel casters, and the back ones are fixed. So it's like a car. You have to have a plan of attack. You can't just shove it where you want it. So I'm not as crazy about that. This is actually a Kubota, um, oh my gosh, that's where those went. I'm looking for those little plastic knives. The Kubota one was KTM Orange, so I ordered some KTM decals for it. It needed some decals pretty bad. Um, all my odd sockets, crazy stuff. I try to label these things because they're so spread out. My tool setup's not ideal, but it works. So I got uh, my universals, my triple squares, uh, all kinds of different oxygen sensor sockets. A lot of them, my oil pressure sending unit sockets, you name it. I've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, I've got a holding tool for doing the Duramax in here somewhere. Don't even know where that is now. Got a oh here it is. There's a little bracing tool. It's supposed to be on this side. 
but I don't have the fanciest, most amazing, awesome tools, but I know where they are and they work and they get the job done. That's the main thing. There's there's toolboxes that you look at and they're so pretty. You don't even want to touch anything. You got crazy wrenches, short ones, circle ones, chopped ones. Because I do this, I can't see buying ridiculously expensive ones. I mean, yeah, that's a craftsman, but uh, and I pick up tools all over. You know, I got the e e wrenches just all the goofy stuff you know i just put in this box that i don't use real often but you just have to have to get the job done so just all kinds of crazy radio tools measuring devices um so as far as a toolbox tour um I'm, i haven't been wanting to do a toolbox tour because on the one hand i know there's a lot better cooler fancier stuff out there i just quite frankly i just don't give a damn about how pretty it is I work with you know they get covered in grease I mean everything here when it was new looked amazing you know everything that was here I mean this used to be fluorescent orange and it looks like some type of something that came out of a baby calf you know out the south end of a northbound calf big deal you know that's what you do this is how I make a living and so that's what I'm worried about so I make sure that uh, it fits my philosophy of use and it does pretty well this is where all the heavy long stuff is. You know, like I've got my uh, slide hammer vice grips that I use for yanking on stuff. And then I've got my backup sets of Harbor Freight sockets and half inch drive. And then this is just things for making tools, you know, for like a belt tool, serpentine belt tools or whatever I need. This one is obviously metric. And so naturally I have another one um, that's all garbage units. I got all my different Subaru specialty tools, you know, for, you know, hanging on to stuff. Hopefully I'll have some Company 23 stuff here in the next little while. And I'll be able to demonstrate that. It takes up a lot less space than these do. So, but I got custom tools, you know, belt tools that I've made that are, look like a sword or something. It's my Honda crank tool I made out of some strap metal and some plumbing supplies and just all kinds of funky stuff that I've had over the years. I don't even remember what that was for, but I had to pull something together to get something to go on. And uh, so that's it. I got giant pry bars and a baseball bat and all kinds of random junk in here. I try to keep organized. I think I'm pretty successful for the most part um, on that end, but uh, in, in course of having to get stuff done, you do what you gotta do, right? So. This is my main toolbox. Most everything that I need comes off of this. Um, all four wheels move really easily. Um, I can get anything out of this blind from a creeper. Piece of cake. Makes for a good sticker collection. When I first bought this box, I was working at a family owned uh, auto repair shop and it was brand new. It looked awesome. It was perfect. The chrome was perfect. This looked like the hood of a you know, a nice black pickup truck or something. And uh, every time I come into work, I had to uh, lock everything up because tools disappear every freaking day. So that was important. Never even close this now. Yeah, all right. So it's a nice secure little box. It's got a little tray on the end of it. I love these things. I tried to buy another new one. And the new ones, I don't remember what the deal was, but I didn't like them. There's something about them that wasn't as ideal as this is. Got hammers on the bottom, you just yank them out. Got my hose tool, hose cable tool, I throw that in the bottom. Because that's something I use quite a bit. So, I mean, this box is great. It's ugly as can be. I had to put new slides in it. Had to go to Home Depot and get some 14-inch uh, ball bearing slides and... I just basically screwed them in there and then welded the end of the screws big so it wouldn't come back out. Got my magnet dishes on the side. But this is a great little outfit. But like I was saying, come into work and there'd be all these car parts and junk and crap on my toolbox. It's all scratched up. I was just like, oh my gosh. Right back to, you know, like you have a tool system that looks amazing and then you work with people who don't have a respectful level that is amazing and things just go to crap. I mean, this thing is ugly, but uh, it's inevitable and it works. It gets the job done really well. That's why I didn't buy the new one, even though this looks so bad. It just works so good. Plus you got all these fun memories on it. So anyway, there's my toolbox tour. Um, 
we'll have somebody break in the shop and steal all my stuff next week and uh, I'll be like why did I do that suck <laughs> but uh, you know people have been requesting long enough and whatnot and I'm usually pretty accommodating when it comes to this sort of thing so that's kind of background on my philosophy of use and why I have what I have got laser pointers which are awesome for pointing things out to customers because they don't know the vocab they don't know that that's a wheel hub bearing assembly or a ABS sensor or whatever but if I go like this and say see your ABS sensor right here there's a chunk of it missing or something you know they're like oh I get that so anyway cool happy fun stuff thanks for watching my videos and uh, cheers